Hello everyone. Welcome to the Nomads podcast. I'm your co-host Prachi and I'm your co-host Bhavya. In life, one always finds it difficult to find what truly makes them happy. Our guest today is someone who did not have such a problem. He's a physics graduate student, but that's not how his journey began. Caleb Brudo left his basketball career along with his dream to play in the NBA to pursue his other dream of being a physicist. Caleb Brudo, welcome to the Nomads podcast. Happy to be here, man. So, um, do you have a first memory of U of H? My first memory Your of U of H? Your first memory of U of H. Wow, that's a, that's a loaded, well, I guess it's not a loaded question, it's a specific question. Um, my first good memory of U of H? Uh, yeah, probably, um, okay, so, I mean, this is 20, 2017, right? So, I, I just, I applied to U of H. Um, the reasons I applied to UH, I, I wanted to, um, well, first of all, I wanted to walk onto a, a basketball team that I, that I thought I'd be capable of walking onto. And I, and I wanted to play for a coach, um, you know, a high quality coach, somebody that could develop me um, and challenge me at, at, mm-hmm. at the highest possible level, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, University of Houston for me was kind of a no brainer. And I, I, I researched a lot of other universities, you know, UT Austin, Texas A&M, uh, Michigan State, all you know, great campuses as well. Um, but you know, University of Houston had the added benefit of of I have family in Houston. Houston, I've always considered as my home. It has that kind of home like feel. Now you can say a lot about Houston, right? There's no mm-hmm. mountains here. There's no like aesthetic beauty to this city. It's got the best food in the world, though. Yeah. Um, and you know, the traffic is terrible, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, 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 for all intents and purposes, it, it is my home, right? So, you know, I, I got accepted. Um, I was excited. I showed the acceptance letter to, um, uh, to my dad. And the first thing he said, you know, because the University of Houston Cougars, and you know, my mom went to UH. He was like, you know, your mom's a cougar, right? I said, don't say that about my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. So... I guess that would be my first memory. It doesn't even have to do with university. Well, I wasn't on University of Houston campus at the time. I was living in Michigan. Um, and, you know, I, I'd grown up in Texas and, and lived other places. When I went to high school in Michigan, that's when I realized, you know, I, I, need, to, I, need, to go, I need to go somewhere else. I, I, I was not as a person who thrived in, in, in high school. So I, I, I wanted to go and do my own thing. I wanted to get out of town. And I, the main thing is I wanted to get out of the cold, right? So, <laughs> so that's, where, that's why I found myself in, in Houston. So it's, you can see it's a variety of, of factors, right? So, so it, was, it was only your mom from Houston? I thought, it was, I thought your father was from Houston. So. I mean, from U of H. Uh, my dad, so my dad got his degree in chemical engineering from <coughs> UT Austin, mm-hmm. ah, okay. and and then that's where he, that's how he met my. Well, it's 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 a long story. He was already working in the industry. My mom studied at at UT Austin, but she was four years younger than than my dad, and then and then she met him. You know, when she came on a on a visit to one of the plants. You know. Houston's uh, famous for their energy, right? So right, there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of energy in oil and gas and and petrochemical companies that that work here. There's there's uh, Exxon, right? And then there's there's Phillips 66, and then there's Dow Chemical. And Dow Chemical is the one my 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 dad worked for, and that's that's how he met my mom. Is he was working in one of their big plants in, in Freeport, and she came on a visit. And uh, uh, she came off of the bus, and my dad was like, "Oh, okay, I'll." I'll uh, <laughs> You know, I'll, I'll, maybe I should go talk to her, and then, mm-hmm. uh, and then you know, whatever, forty years later, or I don't know how long, but and then I came out right. <laughs> um, but in any case, sorry, I didn't answer your question. Yes, my dad, <laughs> my dad studied chemical engineering at UT Austin. My mom studied chemical engineering at UT Austin. She had, uh, she moved in with my dad, and moved to Houston. And I think she had like a couple of credits left on her on her degree plan, oh. so she finished them at UH. Yeah. Ah, yeah, I see. Yeah, 
yeah. I see, yeah. I see, I see. So I actually have a picture in front of the Colon College of Engineering that I took. Mm -hmm. uh, there's that, there's that, you know, concrete slab, or I mm -hmm. guess you don't know because y'all don't go to the, mm -hmm. um, but y'all probably seen the College of Engineering. Um, there's that concrete slab there that says Colon College of Engineering. It's, it's one of the oldest buildings on campus. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a picture that I took at my graduation. Uh, and I didn't realize my mom and dad took their picture when my mom graduated in the exact oh. same exact same location. Oh, know, wow. That's, uh, that's 40 nice. or so, 30 that's or so, so years sweet. back. Yeah. Very sweet. Yeah, yeah. I showed a picture to, to one of my friends. And uh, uh, I won't say anything about her. I'll just say uh, <laughs> she's like a foreign student. and. Mm -hmm. uh, Anyway, she uh, she saw a picture of my mom and dad, and she said, "Oh, your dad's so handsome," <laughs> and your mom, she's so sexy. <laughs> it's like okay. <laughs> so, Caleb, who else in your family plays basketball? Uh, my older so there's I have two brothers. Um, my both of my older brothers played basketball in high school. Um, my oldest brother played football in college, mm -hmm. um, and then my dad played basketball for UT Austin. Oh. Um, but yeah, that's pretty mu that's pretty much it. You know, my family's uh, Jewish, right? Mm -hmm. So it's 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 quite a unique trait, you know, especially within the Jewish community to be as tall as I am. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm six foot, I'm six foot nine. Um, so there's not a lot of people in my community <laughs> that you would expect to be playing basketball at, at any sort of, of, of high level, right? So, Who is uh, that? So I, I didn't know uh, Jewish, Jewish people aren't, aren't tall. I thought, yeah, I thought that, that's were... probably, I'm painting a stereotype here, right? So okay. uh, yeah, I guess you, you can't fit that into a certain category. Well, just, just uh, you know, obviously I'm Jewish, so I've been around the community, and mm -hmm. I'm I'm usually the one getting stared at quite a bit because <laughs> you know I'm, I I I I'm I'm like a giraffe in a in a room full of zebras. So, <laughs> in any case, I, my point my point is 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 there's not a lot of people in my family except for my nuclear family. Ah, the first word we used related to physics in this podcast <laughs> doesn't even have to do with physics yet. Um, yeah, my extended family. Uh, they, they okay. I'll, I'll say I do have one little cousin who's who's really interested in basketball, and he's been playing ever since he was a little kid, and uh, he's getting really good. Um, That's great. Yeah. Uh, do you do you try to coach him a lot? No. I, so I saw I saw him last weekend, and uh, you know he's only he's so cute. He's only oh, I'm gonna get this wrong, and if they listen to this, they're gonna get mad at me. But I think he's I think he's eight or nine or ten oh, okay he's, <laughs> yeah. he's one of those years uh and he was like um i want to play caleb i'll i'll take caleb one-on-one -on -one. and i was like okay <laughs> i flushed him I, I mean it wasn't it wasn't fair it, was, it wasn't a fair of, fight of i'm course. sorry <laughs> with the night I, I said do you want to get do you want to get dunked on do you want to get <laughs> <flushed?"> okay <laughs> So yes, that was his introduction to, 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 to the way I wanted to play basketball. <laughs> so you mentioned that basketball now, you know, that it runs in your family. So I'm sure <laughs> sort of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, new generations are coming. Looking I mean, up he's, to you. he's been inspiring his cousins now, mm -hmm. so that's good. Mm. So uh, do, you, do you think that your family already expected you to play basketball professionally? Uh, expected me. Yeah, so um, I feel like my dad was was pretty good about that. I would have loved to get significantly more coaching, probably from a young age. But you know, you can't criticize your you can't criticize your parents. I mean, they, they, they did what they could, right? And uh, um, you know, I, I'm, I I have no complaints about the way that my parents raised me. If they wanted me to be an elite NBA player, they they probably could have had a little bit more focus on that. But I think my dad did a good job of, of raising me because he didn't necessarily, a lot of parents, you know, they, they might have this image where, okay, their, their son is, has some sort of trait, whether they're tall or they're talented in some respect, whether it's music or basketball or, or whatever. And then they immediately decide, you know, what the trajectory of, of, of their, their child's Career life should be yeah. like, right? And, and that's not the point. The point is, is does your child enjoy it? 
you know absolutely and that's that's the thing you're asking me like my little cousin you know do i do i coach him this stuff he's like no no you gotta be careful about coaching little kids because because little kids get their feelings hurt really easily you know and and mm -hmm. it's it's good to be coached you want to be coachable you want a coachable kid who doesn't take things personally coachable kid yeah, no. yeah. um but at the same time you also don't want to take the joy out of it you know you want you want them to play basketball or do music because they love doing it you know mm -hmm. not because somebody instills it in, in you and i think that's kind of the um that's kind of the idea my dad like flirted with the idea of okay, would I be interested in science or would I be interested in uh, basketball or, or whatever? I think with regard to science, I'm sure he wanted me to be an engineer, <laughs> just like his mom, uh, or sorry, just like just like my mom and just like just like my dad. But I didn't end up, end up being an engineer, right? Yeah. So it's 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 you gotta you know when you're a parent, and I, I'm I've, I'm yet to be a parent, right? You gotta be you gotta be you gotta be a little careful with these things. It's a little it's a little push and push and shove, right? It's mm -hmm. it's like the same idea of, you know, should a parent should a parent yell or criticize, uh, or yell at or or criticize? Well, they probably shouldn't yell at their kid, um, and they probably shouldn't be too critical of their kid. But sometimes you do have to like you have to put your foot down. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you, the kid might cry or whatever, but at the same time, you're not doing them any justice. You know, by 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 not raising them in a certain way. Mm -hmm. If you just let them you know, be their own way, they might not, they might not, you know, they might become a degenerate or, <laughs> or whatever. So, yeah, you well, gotta be al uh, Allow me to push you back a little bit here. Sure. Because uh, there's always, there's a, there's a notion about, you know, uh, grooming them when they're young. Yes. And we, we, have, we have a lot of examples of, you know, these sorts, especially in academia where we're at right now. Yeah. People always start when they're like, you know, they're all, they're, they're basically getting the right guidance throughout their careers, yeah. which which leads them to wherever they are right now. And yeah. that's not just academia; that's sports. That's yeah. a lot of things. Well, we've so. seen it in some professors, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, where I don't want to use the word like silver spoon, right? Mm -hmm. But but clearly, some people have yes. had certain sure. oh, yes. advantages and, and yeah. so. On. And, and that's true. I mean, all of the greats, right? Mozart, yeah. Mozart. They call him a child prodigy, but the reality is, is, is his dad was a, um, was also a, a immensely talented mm -hmm. musician. Yeah. And not only was he a talented musician, but he was also a talented musical educator. Yes. You okay. know, <laughs> it's like it. Okay, it all makes sense now. Mm -hmm. You know, you spend enough time with the kid when they're when they're young. Of course, mm -hmm. people are gonna recognize him as a prodigy and so on. But but he got started young. Yes. Yeah, that's, yes. That's that's the whole idea. You know, was that the best for him though, right? Because he he was so successful. Mozart was so successful when he was young, that um, you know, he, he obviously he fed off that, and and he didn't necessarily grow up with all of the other characteristics and qualities that we may associate with somebody that that is a mature person. Mm -hmm. He never became a mature person. Mm -hmm. He was always. Um, a child at heart, or I mean, yeah. it's important to have some childlike qualities mm -hmm. as you as you as you grow up. But he was, for all intents and purposes, a child. Mm -hmm. I mean, he wrote. Um, I, I don't want to use the wrong term. I was going to say a play, but it's not a play. A composition of sorts um, called uh, um, what's well, in German? Leash mein Ars, mm -hmm. okay. which means lick my ass. <laughs> <laughs> He, uh, that was discovered okay. like in the last uh, maybe 50 or so years ago that, oh. that, that Mozart, I mean, in, he was 30 or something. I mean, don't quote me on this, right? Look, look, look it up online for yourself, <laughs> right? Um, uh, yeah, but he, I mean, he, 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 it's very clear that he never, he never grew up. And, and as a result, he was, um, uh, he was ridiculed and um, people didn't think very highly of him. They just saw him as somebody that, that, that was good at playing music. And that's not what you want to be when you grow up. You don't want to be that one dimensional, even though you're, you're great. I mean, yes. a one trick pony, agreed, agreed. you don't, you, you can be great in that mm -hmm. aspect, but, but you're a human, right? Which mm -hmm. means you need to be multidimensional. Yes. You need to yes. strive to be what I call a modern Renaissance, mm -hmm. Renaissance man. You know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't put all of your, you know, when you're, 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 you're um, what's the word? When you're when you're on the stock market, right? Mm -hmm. You know, when you're investing, right? You never put all of your stock mm 
Mm, you yes. never put all of your money into one stock. Yeah. Yes. You need to, you know, you can't put all of your eggs into and one basket. And I think basket. that That's multidimensionality and maturity comes from the fact, uh, comes from your struggle, which he never did. He never had to struggle. He got, he, he, his starting point was way off, like, where others start. Like, he started off at a point where, at, especially at that time, not everyone got that opportunity. Mm -hmm. But because his father was in the same field, he was able to start off at a really great point, which got him this success. Yeah. And because yeah. he did not struggle, he lacked that maturity. And I think it's a, that, that struggle quality, right? That, mm -hmm. we, that we like to see in the books that we read and yes. the movies that we watch, because struggle implies character development. Yes, you know? yes. Um, and you know, th there's, there's musical composers that, that did struggle. And in my opinion, ended up becoming greater than Mozart mm -hmm. because they struggled so much. Beethoven, right. De Debussy, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to say his name wrong and accidentally say a different word. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, what is it? Moonlight Sonata, Claire mm -hmm. de Lune, one of my favorite pieces all time. And, and Mozart's not even, I mean, Mozart was great, right? There's uh, um, uh, Serenade and mm -hmm. what's the other one that I really like? The one that he wrote and he died while he wrote it. Um, oh wow, that's gonna kill me. Can I sing it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh God, you're gonna have to cut that one. Out. <laughs> no, but coming back to the same question. So, I mean, it's not just about genetics that I was talking about, or like an early life, uh, you know, having that privilege or whatever. I was, I was talking about coaching in general. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of examples where, you know, the, the stars in their respective industry have been given that training very early on in their lives. Mm -hmm. And hence they are what they are right now. Yeah. So, so I mean, I, so yeah, to answer your question, did I ever get in, in mm -hmm. really early in my life? No, I didn't start playing basketball until my sophomore year oh. Of, oh, okay. of high school. Um, yeah, I was kind of a, like, I was a late bloomer, you know, uh, it's, it's very possible had I started early and, mm -hmm. you know, when I was, uh, had the privilege of, of, of playing at UH, you know, that was, that was nearly all of my teammates is, is they wanted to start. Uh, they were in a little bit different circumstances though, right? Um, um, you know, I don't want to say, okay, so, you know, there's a lot of people that, okay, might not necessarily have a father figure in their life, or at the same time, you know, they might not have grown up as privileged, you know, so there's this whole idea of, of you know, you, you, there's that possibility out there of you finding that, that, that diamond, you know, the equivalent of that diamond being making it to the NBA and, and supporting your family and, and stuff. And I, I, never, I never had that motivation Right, because, because um, you know, I, I, I'll admit, like I, I grew up, um, not, not privileged, but I, I also wasn't starving every night, <laughs> you uh -huh. know, yeah. um, and I never felt like I had some internal struggle or, or, or goal or duty in mind uh, to eventually make it so I could, I could support my family. I mean, my family was never uh, on the brink <laughs> of, right. of anything, so. Um, you know, there's there's that aspect as well that that people have that 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 level of motivation uh, on top of that. You know, but um, to be great at anything, right? It's 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 one thing to be motivated. Even even the great motivator, like supporting your family or getting mm -hmm. out of the financial struggle or uh, anything like that, it's a whole nother thing to to remain disciplined. You yes. know, and I I, mm -hmm. I think that's the quality a lot of my a lot of my teammates, especially the ones that were successful and ended up going to the NBA, mm -hmm. um, there's a couple that, that, that were able to make it to the NBA, and that was their consistency. Every single day they were, they were in the gym getting up shots, or they were focusing on aspects of the game that ne weren't necessarily flashy or weren't necessarily going to get them, um, uh, weren't necessarily going to feed to their ego, mm -hmm. Um, but it was going to help us win. And the more that we won, the more likely it was that, that, that you know, it's, they get the it's, chance. it's like my, my coach would say, or a lot of people say, right? Um, the rising tide lifts, lifts all ships, mm -hmm. right? So in that case, it's just focus on the win so 
that you know your ship can rise mm -hmm. as well not just so you you can um and uh you know i was i was blessed to be able to to get to know you know people like that so going back to you know you know i was talking about your memory of u of h so when you decided to come to u of h like what was your headspace you know engineering basketball how were you thinking about these things did you want to play professionally did you want to do did you fo want to focus on engineering my answer is going to be a little bit more abstract mm -hmm. yeah uh, Go ahead. so basketball for me um you know because i had started so late right for me it was a little personal it wasn't necessarily i mean yeah obviously everybody wants to make it to the nba blah blah blah, blah. but um for me it was it was the challenge of of or the question I was trying to answer, right? How far could I push myself? How far mm -hmm. could I push my, my mind and body and to what level could I get to? Mm -hmm. I had n no, no, no thought in my mind or, 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 or very little um, thoughts that, that, that subscribed to the idea that, that I could even make it on the, I could even make it on the team. Um, but I ran a lot, you know, I, I, I conditioned myself immensely over, over the summer um, so that when I did go to, uh, go to try to walk on that I could stand out and, and I did, and I did stand out and that's what they, and that's why they, they chose me. So, you know, and I didn't want to feel once I got into that position, I didn't want to feel content. I wanted to, you know, obviously, uh, be grateful for the opportunity, but I wanted to try to push myself even farther and try mm -hmm. to see, okay, can I, uh, can I get any? Can I get any playing time or or mm -hmm. or, or 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 anything like that? Uh, that didn't happen as much, you know. But I'm. But but that's not really not the point of it all, right? It's yeah. it's yeah. it's how yeah. far can you? How far oh, can you push yeah, yourself? Yeah, yeah. Um, so for that, for me, it was a it was a personal inquiry. Now the aspect of engineering, right? I had always been interested in, um, uh, you know taking apart things and, and you know, in the, in, in the modern world, right? You know, back then in the 1940s, right, you could see, for instance, a crystal radio. Mm -hmm. um, and you could take it apart and you can see all of the components. And it's, yeah. it's relatively intuitive mm -hmm. if you're smart enough yeah. um, to figure out how this radio works. It's not necessarily the case today. I yes. take apart my iPhone or I Chips. take apart... Yeah, and, and there's a lot of things that happen at the microscopic level <laughs> that you don't, you know, you don't necessarily, I mean, even at this level, we, we, we don't yes. necessarily understand the ins and outs of, of all of that. And that, for me, was, was fascinating. And that's why I wanted to study electrical engineering. The other aspect of it is, is that I looked at the degree plan mm -hmm. of electrical engineering, and I looked at the degree plan of physics, mm -hmm. and I thought to myself, you know, there's a lot that goes on as far as electrodynamics is concerned mm -hmm. and how circuit theory works and, and, and how instrumentation works that aren't necessarily taught in a physics bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt like, you know, and this is going to be a contrary opinion, mm -hmm. I felt like um, I could learn more from an electrical engineering degree about physics than okay. I could from a, from a physics degree. Um, and you know there has to be some level of truth in that, right? Because um, at some point, you know, as you continue to do uh, electrical engineering and you you get to a more fundamental level, it genuinely just it becomes physics. You know, right. I yeah. mean, what what even is the difference sometimes between yes. electrical engineering <laughs> and physics? And I know, yeah, it makes it makes you laugh, right? But. You know, you look at all the colloquium speakers. Spoken like a true engineer. <laughs> you look at all the colloquium speakers, right? And and nearly half of them got their, didn't even study physics. They got yes. their PhD in electrical engineering, or they yeah. got their PhD in. I, but 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 these colloquiums are still like they were material science, and you know, yes. where electrical engineering engineering kind of you know, was a was a tool that supplemented their research in physics. So it's it's mm -hmm. very similar to your situation where you're trying to extract all the juices out of electrical engineering, uh, you know, your degree, and then you're trying to push everything. Mm -hmm. Remember what uh, Andrew Zangwill talked about in his talk where he was yeah. saying that uh, engineering and physics, like the distinction comes when the university decides there's a distinction. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. That, that happens. Yeah, I mean, and seriously, sometimes yes. it's like, what the hell is even... 
yeah. is even the difference. I mean, eventually right? it's like starting. He's very, he's very loyal to his tribe. No. <laughs> because, because like, I even, respect that. I even respect nowadays that. we see that, uh, especially in, in the group where Caleb is working in high energy physics experimental, we see mostly people are on their computers, you know, doing coding. And eventually we will come to a point in our lives where the university decides this isn't a part of physics anymore and goes to computer engineers. And that, then that is and it's, it's going to change. And then again, something else will come. And then again, it will become a part of engineering. So I feel, I mean, if we, if we go way back, we will see everything is literally just physics. Even yeah. chemistry, for that matter, yeah. is I, physics. I would say people also don't assign any, and I, I don't necessarily like to use the word application, because the, ap the word application makes it seem um, technology and you know something that makes it seem a little bit more trivial and uh, and when something when the science becomes applied it doesn't necessarily become trivial in nature oh yeah um, absolutely but people don't see the significance of science until it, it becomes applied yes. and, and you know people like to use the word you know and I hate this right because you, you see you know people use this word quantum as as a buzzword right oh yeah um, and you know quantum mechanics and so on you don't really assign any significance to that other than the ooh and ah of using that word until you see where it's actually used. And the yes. main thing that where it's used is in transistors, yes. you know, solid state devices that are used in our laptops and our computers and, yeah. and so on. You know, we want to use the word quantum quantum computer, right? Even our classical computers uh, oh. without yeah. quantum mechanics would not yeah. be able to, to operate. So in, in some aspects, you could call them quantum computers. <laughs> well, but you know why they're quantum computers, yeah. you know, yeah, because yeah. Uh, you have to use uh, because of the probabilistic yeah. algorithm yeah. of some of some sort yeah. um, in, in the logic and the logic, uh, sorry, the uh, um, the algorithmic logic logic mm. unit, you know, the ALU yeah. in, in, in computers. Um, so I, I'd say, you know, that's, that's kind of the importance of it all, is, is we don't assign any significance to anything until it becomes a reality. Yes. That's kind of where, you know, okay, so you can say, okay, what's the difference between physics and electrical engineering? It's also a good question to ask, what's the difference between physics and mathematics? Mm -hmm. Because if you want to go to somewhere where it's more abstract, right, and it's yes. not reality, yes. or it doesn't apply unnecessary, or directly, then, then ask yourself, okay, what's the difference between math and, and physics? Because mathematicians will focus solely on um, solely on the abstract um, calculation and abstract notion of, of the mathematics. mathematics yeah. yeah, and 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 where that where that leads them, not necessarily how it's applied or what it says about True. Uh, about our reality or yeah. about mm -hmm. the universe in general. And the physics take the mathematics and then they apply it. Yeah. You know, so. People call physics applied mathematics. So yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the question is, 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 you know, which field is the most fundamental in nature? Would it yeah. be, would it be the one that does the least application or would it be the one that does the most abstraction and, or sorry, would it, yeah. So would it be the one that does the least application and the most abstraction or the one that does the least abstraction and the most mm. application? Mm. I think when, when we use the word fundamental here, it's, um, it's sort of, you know, it is related to the abstract part of it. And the only reason is because, you know, we, we need a solid. So, so how does mathematics function? Mathematics functions like mathematical logic is based on axioms and mm -hmm. proofs. So mm -hmm. that, that's, that's the most abstract level of mathematics where, you know, you're, you're going to each and every step of the proof and, and you're checking if it's, if it's still satisfying the axioms and everything. So I think that's, that's sort of a confusion when you word, use the word fundamental. But with physics, I think it's, it's more about, you know, how, how does reality function in, you know, at the most fundamental but level. But I think in yeah. reality in itself is extremely subjective because like you and I, we are physicists, so for us, reality is associated with physics for people who are not associated with this field for them fundamental things will be what what they can see things that are involved in their daily life mm -hmm. and for them reality does not necessarily mean what we are doing yeah and for them reality is like okay i mean the least it could be how the phones work and then yeah. 
from there, engineering comes into play. And for them, fundamental physics or fundamental sciences could be just engineering. Yeah. But as physicists, it, it, allow, it allows us to kind of, you know, see, see the bigger yeah, picture, course, see what's happening. Because essentially what we're doing right now will be technology in like, let's say, 100 years. Exactly. So yeah. I agree because I'm, I'm a physicist myself. But then again, I feel that it's extremely subjective to associate reality with, you know, something what we're doing. Because, mm-hmm. because like people, that's, for that's example, what, that's what happens. Yeah, yeah, because if people, for example, someone is in, let's say, doing architecture, then for them, reality is, you know, designing, building houses, and the science behind that becomes fundamental. Yeah, it it gets really philosophical, right? Because uh, you know, a mathematician. The way I see it is, is a mathematician if they're pure math or if they focus on pure mathematics and that's not every mathematician right some mathematicians focus on physics mm-hmm. yeah. there's a lot of at uh, UH that focus mm-hmm. on interpretation of quantum um, so uh, yeah so it's it's not necessarily every mathematician <coughs> that fits into this field of I see what you mean is there really any difference mathematics and mathematics and physics uh, and it's also <laughs> we see this uh, between experimentalists and theorists when theorists are like, okay, we're working on this, 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 and they're like, if it's not, um, like, if we cannot test it, what's the point? Yeah, and, and, and I think we've talked about it before, the history of physics kind of has this ebb and flow of, yes. of which one is more uh, domineering, yeah, I yeah. should say. Like, if you were to sign a sign, and you know, there's a lot of things in, in uh, uh, electrical engineering, right, where we, where we assign, a, or, or in music, where you assign a, a master, a master component and a slave component, right? Mm-hmm. Which I feel like that might be a controversial <laughs> title. Maybe they should change that someday. <laughs> you know, which one? Which one is? Which one is driving the bus and which one is along for the ride, right? Yeah. So you know, yeah, I feel like early early twentieth century, it was mm-hmm. definitely theory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then as we got to uh, more precision and more, um, yeah, more more precision and more resol- and higher resolution in our experiments then it turned out that we can't necessarily predict things precisely mm-hmm. with yeah. the theory. And that's, that's happening in QCD, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, for those who are listening, and that's um, uh, quantum chromodynamics. It's, it's the theory, theory of strong uh, nuclear interaction. So it's, 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 it's the way we explain how, how fundamental and subatomic particles like hadrons uh, and quarks interact. So. Um, in QCD, we have, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, so in QCD, there's, there's a lot of things that we try to use theoretical models, mm-hmm. hadron gas mm-hmm. resonance, um, uh, PNJL model, and, and so on, that don't necessarily give us a precise equation of state. And yeah. we have to constrain these equations of state, and this is what the focus of my research, constrain these equations yeah. of state using the physical observable. So that thing right now is being driven by experiment. experiment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we use, we use the theoretical model, but we have to constrain the theoretical model. Mm-hmm. But see, that's the thing. Um, this is something that, you know, I think all of us should be aware that these are experiments that can be done. So mm-hmm. Q- QCD energy scale can be, you know, can be explored yes. in with the current technology of, uh, you know, colliders and other other laboratories that that are working on this. Certain parts of the phase diagram, right? Yes. Not necessarily. Yeah. It's not the phase diagram but, isn't complete. Yeah. Right. So yes. we have to. That's use, what I mean. We have to yeah. try to use this. And this, this is actually, an interesting part. And uh, um, Rene, or Dr. Uh, Dr. Belvi, that's 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 my advisor. He. Uh, he had me read a couple of papers over the weekend that involved this Bayesian analysis mm-hmm. framework where there's these people that are trying to put together this framework where you can take multiple observables. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's uh, Rutik, one of, one of my colleagues in, in, our, in our group the, uh, that works on one observable. I work on speed of sound. Um, and there's several other observables that come out of these uh, state variables that come out of these experiments. Can we take all of these state variables and yeah. use this, th- this Bayesian, Bayesian inference to actually, which is really interesting, can we take all of these things and, and uh, uh, use that to Give to them constrain. credences and then use, use principles of Bayesian probability. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
It's, it's very it's, interesting. It's a huge part of physics right now. I, I, I thought it was, you know, I was doing research in gravitational waves when I was an undergraduate. You know, that's, that's kind of what brought me to, uh, you know, because my advisor at the time, uh, Dr. Gamanu Gunaratna, told me that I need to, need to pursue a, a PhD. But anyway, um, yeah, so while I was doing, doing that research in gravitational waves, um, I came in contact with uh, quite a few people um, at, at MIT, for instance, that are focusing on the Bayesian inference of gravitational waves. You know, there's a lot of things that we can try to extract from uh, gravitational waves. There's certain parameters like mass mm -hmm. and radius mm -hmm. and the Z component of spin from these black holes and these neutron stars and these other compact objects. Um, and is there, is there a way that we can take this, this network of possible gravitational waves that are predicted by the theory um, and extract the entire wave from the from the signal that's embedded in all of that in all of that noise, uh, yeah. but it's interesting to see that it, that's just that that's not one area of or it's not used in just one field. I'm sure it's used in uh, well, what I'm seeing right now in high energy physics, but I'm also sure it's it's being used used elsewhere. I, I, honestly, that's kind of in my opinion, that's probably going to be the next major revolution in in science is the data analysis aspect. That's what. Yeah. That's that's what she was saying that you know it it's it could very well go to the computer science department. <laughs> yeah. So okay, so Caleb, let's go back to basketball oh, for sorry. a while. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a question that I've been always wondering because, but I've not been in the field of basketball, so I don't know much. And you've been in this field for more than four years, mm -hmm. and you've played professionally. So do you ever feel that there's a bias towards? black students in basketball have you ever thought that you know for example if you weren't six nine and say you were six that you would have still received the same opportunity and recognition yeah um it's 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 a fair question first of all i didn't play professionally <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> is there is there a certain intrinsic bias towards african American? well okay so uh, i feel like i'm kind of walking on eggshells right because mm -hmm. you got to be really careful about uh, about these uh, these sorts of things, um, uh, uh, n the answer is no. I don't think there's there's an inherent bias. Um, I think in the African American community, there's just a lot of people that that it's it's basketball and and football is of great interest. Mm -hmm. um, so there there just happens to be a lot of people that focus on. Mm -hmm. Um, that focus on and dedicate their time to basketball. With that being said, you know, it's, okay, so, <laughs> yeah, UH, I think um, some people have complained, right? There, there hasn't necessarily been a, a, a white person, you know, that, that got significant mi minutes on the, on the team, right? Mm -hmm. So there were, there, was, there were people like me, um, and there are people like, uh, okay, so there's Ryan Elvin right now, who's also uh, a walk-on like me. And then there was Wes Van Beck that was before me, and he was also a walk-on. Wes Van Beck actually played quite a bit. And uh, I know Coach Sampson would, would attribute a lot of the success of the team that, that, that we have now and that we've had in the past couple of years, even when he wasn't playing on the team, because he is kind of where it all he and other other players as well are, are where it, where it all uh, kind of started. I don't think Coach Sampson is the type of coach that would have any any particular bias. He's the type of coach that wants to win mm -hmm. at, at all costs. So mm -hmm. he's going to draw the line wherever right. he wants to wherever he wants to draw the line. Um, the reason I say it's a fair question. What is it? Seventy, eighty percent of the people mm -hmm. that are in the NBA are mm -hmm. are of African American or have some sort yeah. of African American uh, uh, trait or heritage. I think that's just because it's a principal interest for them. Mm -hmm. I think that's 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 all it is. I don't think there's anything that 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 gives them any sort of inherent um, advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, there's some people that that have these sort of racist. Uh, um, that make these racist remarks that, for instance, a black person can run faster, can jump higher. Um, obviously, that's not necessarily true. I mean, it's 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 based off the individual 
uh, it's based off Capacity. the individual yeah. person, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. you can have black people that, that can't run fast and you can have white people that can run mm-hmm. really fast. It's just that there's, there's more people that dedicate their time, uh, to right. that field. And as a result, there's, there's, um, more number of, yeah, there's more, it's a higher number of people that are, that are successful, uh, in that. Have you ever felt that you would have got received the same? Oh, if I was African American? Mm-hmm. Um, if like if you weren't six nine, oh if I wasn't six nine, mm-hmm. yeah I no I probably wouldn't have received the same treatment no but, you know because there's a there's an obvious advantage to to right. to being that tall just like there's an obvious advantage to being smart you know and, yeah and mm-hmm. <laughs> when you're pursuing yeah. when you're pursuing physics, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So talking. I hope um, I don't get canceled for all my <laughs> remarks. I, I tried to say things in the most. Uh, what's the word? Accommodating <laughs> way as possible. <laughs> yeah. So talking about uh, your relationship with physics, when did you like? How has it? How has your relationship been with physics? Like, if, you know, when did you realize that you wanted to do physics mm-hmm. and not engineering mm-hmm. and basketball? And you know, was 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 it an event? Was it a phase transition that led to the realization? Like you getting hit on the head? Yeah. <laughs> Like, do you yeah. want to tell our viewers and listeners about that? <laughs> Perhaps a story for another day. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like, talk I, about I it. I wouldn't hear it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who's the interviewer? <laughs> <laughs> um, any particular event that occurred? Uh, I will attribute the initial interest to, um, to Kip Thorne and Christopher Nolan and their production of, of Interstellar. Awesome. As, yeah. as a little, you know, a little kid, I was a teenager, but still, and I was probably six foot five or whatever. <laughs> so I was going to say as a little kid, I've always wanted to do physics, but I've never been a little kid. Um, <laughs> little tall kid. Yeah. 13, 14 years old, I watched Interstellar and I didn't understand. I didn't understand it the first time I watched it, but I knew there was something that was really cool about and there's like something hidden, you know, there's, there's something out there and we don't necessarily know what it is, but to know it would be immensely powerful. And I just have that. I feel like everybody has that intuition. Mm-hmm. I wanted to pursue that. So that was like, you know, that kind of gave me the, the, the hint, you know, cause it's not like interstellar. Obviously there's a lot of hyper- hyperbole going on. Yeah. But Kip Thorne was the, you know, the scientific, scientific advisor on, yeah. the, on the movie. Yeah. Yeah, so there, there had to be some sort of uh, realistic quality to it. Okay, now the whole idea of wormholes and, and time warps and, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, that's obviously out there, but it's not necessarily uh, incorrect when you, um, the way that, that, you know, people like Hawking and mm-hmm. Kip Thorne have, have formulated things. You know, this is the difference between, you know, is it mathematically consistent or is it mm-hmm. e- ob- observable and experimentally uh, consistent. Um, but yeah, that was kind of the, that was the first thing. And I remember after, after watching that movie, I just became immensely obsessed with, uh, you know, reading about, uh, it's the history too. I like reading about the history, reading about Einstein and reading about Newton and reading about, um, I didn't know about Emmy Noether until, until like a few years ago, but yeah. once I knew about her, I was, I was a little bit upset that I didn't learn about her mm-hmm. earlier. I mean, yeah. that's that's an awesome person. I mean, we have arguments, right? Who, who yeah. was a greater, or who contributed more to the field? Yeah. Did Emmy Noether or, or Albert Einstein? Which is, in my opinion, an actual argument that you can that you can make because yeah. there's so many things that happen today that have some sort of where where Noether's theorem has some sort of implication. So, so I think right? Einstein uh, contributed. In a in a f- in a way that was fundamental to physics, but then without Emmy Noether, none of the modern phys- physics would have existed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So see, this is this is uh, exactly referring to a, an earlier discussion that we were having. Noether's theorem is far more fundamental than you know yes, Einstein's yes, contribution. True. So how did that how did that like this initi- initiation was uh, interstellar? How did that grow through your, you know, you were playing, you were playing basketball, you were, you were focusing on your engineering courses. Mm-hmm. How did that idea kind of? Uh, I think it started with, I really wanted to understand more about 
Uh, I thought Einstein was the coolest <laughs> back in the day before I learned about Emmy Neuther. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to learn more about relativity and mm. this whole concept of, of time and, and mm. getting to the bottom of getting to the bottom of time. Um, and then and then what happened a few years later, 2017, right? August 9th of 2017, they detected two black holes yes. that Large had collided yeah. with one yeah. another mm -hmm. several, you know, millions of miles, millions of miles it away. Was 2015. Marking I'm sorry. Yes, 2017. 2017. I'm getting. I'm getting confused with yeah. the binary neutron star yeah, emerging yeah, yeah, that yeah. occurred. Uh, yeah. August. August eighth or 9th of 20, 2015. 15. That's correct. Okay, so that would be a year later. Um, yes, and then I got really interested in this this idea of gravitational waves, and yeah. I was also interested in you know because it was like a really hot topic. It's still a hot topic. Quantum computing. Mm -hmm. So I just reached out to you know, several professors, I'd send them emails mm -hmm. and stuff and uh, ask them really, really naive and really stupid questions now that I think <laughs> about it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's justified, it right? Because I'm, I was a high school student and I think I asked one question to Kip Thorne, actually. I sent him, <laughs> I sent him an email. Oh, wow. Uh, and he replied, believe it or not. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I asked him a really naive question about, uh, n I think, I thought it was general relativity, it was special relativity, because clearly I was talking about uh, velocity and not acceleration, yeah. and I was talking about light and signaling. Uh, and then he told me to purchase his book on gravitation, <laughs> 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 which, which uh, I would say is, is uh, yeah, I don't think the right response, in, in, in my opinion, because a, a high school student cannot read gravitation. Yeah, so, and then I, and then when I first got to UH, I, uh, uh, first professor that I talked to was Dr. Morrison, Greg oh, Morrison, because really? he taught my physics one course. I went up to him and I, I started he's asking. A, he's a very interesting person. Yeah. Oh, yes. I started asking him about, uh, relativity and I noticed he had gravitation textbook in his room. So I would sit in his suite that he had mm -hmm. there. Um, I remember I was just, uh, I was like a, fr I was a fresh, yeah, I was a freshman. I would, I would sit there and I would read. I would read and I'd genuinely like try my hand at the problems. Of course, I, I knew nothing of, of how to do these problems. Um, and then I, and then I think I had this conversation with Dr. Morris and that I, I think I need a simpler, <laughs> a simpler <laughs> a simple introduction text. to relativity. <laughs> uh, and I think he suggested a book. And then this is, that's where I first talked to, uh, where I met Dr. Gunaratna because, okay, there was one time, I don't know if Dr. Morrison was out of town or if he was sick, but Dr. Gunaratna subbed for my Physics 1 course, uh. and he taught one class. This is, this is amazing, because this is 2017. This is, uh, um, wow, this is, this is six years ago, almost seven years ago. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know what he talked about, but it was really compelling for me. <laughs> Clearly not compelling enough, because I can't remember. Um, <laughs> So I went to his office and I started asking him questions about uh, relativity and he gave me some sort of explanation and he looked at me like it should be obvious. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Of course, you know, that's what every student says. Oh, that makes sense. And yeah. it didn't make sense at all. Like everyone's just, you know, recommending, hey, just read this book, <laughs> Gravitation. So it was like a little bit of an awkward encounter the first time and I didn't speak to him for another I was just really impressed by him But I didn't feel like I had enough concrete understanding of things to to have a genuinely um, efficient or I Have a conversation where I get a lot of out of out of it with him um, so I kind of kept his name in the back of my head and when I was when I was a uh, let's see in my third year or my fourth year during COVID, I wanted to learn more about quantum, mm -hmm. quantum mechanics. And uh, I, I'd read all of the faculty profile at UH. I guess I didn't read Dr. Ratti's, otherwise I probably would have reached out to her. But I reached out to a uh, professor, Dr. Donald Curry, a late Dr. Donald Curry um, in 2019 and he didn't respond to my email. Mm -hmm. And then in 2020, I reached out to him again, and he was like really excited to see my, to see my email. So that makes me think, 
maybe he just didn't see my email in 2019. Mm -hmm. I probably just should have sent another email. A, a reminder, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was working a, as an intern at an electrical engineering at a power engineering firm. And, you know, he, he, he uh, you know, I, I told him that I was interested in, in, in his research. He focused on signal processing and interpretation of, of quantum. Um, he was on medical leave from the university because he had he had mm. blood cancer, oh. uh, and he also had heart disease, mm -hmm. which I'm really surprised that he was so open to seeing somebody, especially during COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, given his condition, and now I kind of feel bad about it. I mean, he never got, thank God, he never got COVID. Um, but in any case, yeah. So he invited me over to his house. Um, and I'd go to his house, and we kind of started this correspondence, and we would sit there in his in his living room. Um, uh, I remember his wife was really really nice, uh, and he would teach me quantum. We would just sit there, and he would teach me directly, which was a really cool, really cool thing. And and then he wanted to start doing research with me. Um, I with me focusing on software. Um, but one of the fields was Suzy quantum. Which so yeah. you can imagine, I had only been studying quantum and he suggested Shankar as the textbook, yeah. which, you know, that's not the best textbook to learn quantum from. Uh, and he's already wanting me to try, try my hand at Suzy. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are listening and watching in, that's the theory of, of supersymmetry and, and quantum mechanics. So this, this, this idea that, uh, so we have fundamental particles uh, one of them are bosons. We attribute that to uh, their spins, right? So spin is an intrinsic quality of matter, just like mass is. We can't necessarily assign uh, anything physical to it, but we use we use that um, we use that quality to differentiate between certain particles. So one of them is bosons that are integer spin particles, and then the other ones are fermions, which are spin one half. Uh, or sorry, half integer uh, spin particles. So there's this idea that that some theorists have put put forth that there's some particles that are um, effectively symmetric pairs of one another. But in any case, yeah, it's 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 a theory that that you know people in the most advanced levels of of people that work in quantum. Uh, work on and in three months he was trying <laughs> to get me to so of course I didn't make any significant advancement <laughs> or contribution to the field uh, maybe someday but it's not my active field of field of, of research but in any case he, you know he had, he had got me in touch with you know so I was really grateful for that opportunity unfortunately he had passed away uh, in 2021 or 2022 it was 2021 he passed away uh, yeah, he had passed away, and he, just before he had passed away, and, and this is the amazing thing, he was teaching me quantum up until a week before he passed away. Oh, I mean, that's really? how dedicated he was to, um, you know, and I, I told him too, I mean, I'll be honest, I, I, um, you know, he was, he was really honest with me about his, about his condition and everything. I said, are you sure you don't want to, you know, spend time with your, you know, with your family and, 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 and so on? Um, and, and the truth is, is, you know, he lived right next to his family. So it's not, <laughs> he, he spent an hour with me. It's not like I was taking, you know, time away from, from his family before he, before he passed. But in any case, I mean, it kind of just goes to show. And, and that's really where it was galvanizing for me, this pursuit of science, mm -hmm. that there was somebody out there that was so interested and invested in it that he was willing to teach it. And, and and think about it and be so fascinated by it. I mean, he was so fascinated by it up until a week before his passing. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Like if you're a if you're a chemical engineer, right? <laughs> <laughs> Back to chemical engineering. Or if you're an engineer or or a stockbroker or whatever. I mean, who does that until <laughs> uh, until their deathbed? You know? Einstein did it. Yeah, exactly. But that's what I'm saying is 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 there, this, this field mm -hmm. has the capacity to allow people to become so entrenched and so mm -hmm. engrossed in it. To die with their boots on. Yes, exactly. So it's like, why would you not want to yeah. pursue something like that? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so after uh, just a week before he passed away, he had called um, Dr. Gunaratna. 
Mm-hmm. Funny enough, this, this is it's all coming together now, right? <laughs> uh, and he told he told Dr. Gunaratna to teach me the rest of the semester of of quantum. Uh, oh, so that's that 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 begins my first correspondence with him. Right. Mm. And then my interest was in the gravitational waves, right? Mm-hmm. The whole idea of interstellar and the uh, gravitational waves from 2015 and 2017. Um, <coughs> and obviously, I'm an electrical engineer, right? I don't know <coughs> a lick of 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 general relativity or mm-hmm. or, or relativity, so I, I can't make any theoretical contribution to the mm-hmm. field. And I, at that point in time, I was like, okay, I've, I've tried Susie, whatever the hell that is. <laughs> um, I, I've tried my hand at it. Uh, I want to do something where I can make a genuine contribution to the field. And with me being an engineer, where I can make that contribution is in the field of signal processing. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to focus on the signal processing aspect of LIGO. Um, mm-hmm. And that's what I told Dr. Gunaratna. Now, as you guys know, that's not his field of, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. of interest, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, Rene Belvede put it quite succinctly that Dr. Gunaratna is what he likes to call a pure physicist. You know, he focuses on nonlinear dynamics, but yeah. he can do just about everything because yeah. he's knowledgeable in everything mm. um so yeah so he 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 was willing to he was willing to assist me mm-hmm. um and he'd also worked on signal processing believe it or not with dr with dr Curry oh, back nice. in the day so what i tried to do is take dr Curry's techniques and uh, apply it to the signal processing pipeline that ligo had um in order to try to extract and, and denoise the signal so i can extract the wave OK. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I presented this research at an APS meeting at UH Clear Lake uh, the following semester. Um, and Renee was there. And this oh. is where I first this is where I first met Renee as an undergraduate. Um, so I was talking about how I've, I've s- maybe made a marginal improvement to the to the signal to noise. Uh, ratio. ratio. I've, I've mm-hmm. been able to extract more noise, so the signal to noise ratio has increased. And he uh, uh, he he became really interested in it. You know, he was he wanted to do gravitational waves in the '90s, actually. Oh, and right. then came to the conclusion that oh, they're not gonna. It's such a <laughs> it's such a it's such a sensitive instrument that they have to make. Um, but in any case, yeah, so I presented this research uh, at the APS at the APS meeting in UH Clear Lake. Renee was there. And he started asking me questions about the post-merger phase. Mm-hmm. Okay. I didn't know this. The post-merger has yet to be observed for the neutron star right. mergers. Mm-hmm. Obviously, this is where it's all starting to come together, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because neutron stars ha- are very valuable uh, for experimentalists because they can reveal um, a lot of the physics that happens at uh, for dense nuclear matter mm-hmm. okay and then that's uh, neutron stars have their own um, have their own realm within the QCD phase diagram yes. um, uh, so neutron stars have their own realm in the QCD phase diagram Um, So to understand a little bit more about the physics of neutron stars would help you understand the physics of of, uh, fundamental nuclear Mm -hmm. nuclear matter. Um, And whether or not the neutron stars that merge, Mm -hmm. right, if they become a neutron star, Mm -hmm. a more dense uh, neutron star, a massive neutron star, or if they become a black hole, or if they become a neutron star that, that, that collapses into a mm-hmm. black hole would have immense implications on on w- w- the physics of, of dense nuclear yes. dense nuclear matter right but the strain itself and the post merger so what he was asking me uh, uh, I didn't think I answered mm-hmm. it correctly for him but he was essentially asking me if if there's any contribution to my analysis uh, that my analysis can make to potentially observing this post-merger <laughs> the answer was no this post-merger phase is is the magnitude of it is too small for even yeah. LIGO to detect so hopefully oh. another instrument the uh, I know they're trying to build one in space yeah. now f- to yeah uh, so that there's no noise or very limited noise um, 
Yeah, so hopefully they will they will observe it. But uh, in any case, I, I I became really interested in this idea of because he talked about equation of state mm -hmm. and this and and the possibility of the neutron stars not actually being or sorry, there's a certain class of neutron stars that aren't necessarily neutron in nature. They might be quark in nature. Oh, okay. uh, so that's where I got really interested in the particle physics aspect. And then I, I, I'd like to see, per my research, if there's some way that all of these fields can kind of intersect <laughs> with one another. Right. You know, because you, you have particle physics, you have nuclear physics, and then you have astrophysics. Is there a way that we can merge, we can merge these things? And that's where I'm getting really interested in this Bayesian, Bayesian, uh, uh, inf or Bayesian framework, uh, this analysis that, that he's brought forth. So my, my research right now, I'm trying to take, and you know, so I, 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 I started that correspondence with Rene, right? So, and then I eventually asked if I could be his graduate student um, because I got really interested in that idea. So now I'm trying to focus on the high energy experiments, mm -hmm. in particular the STAR experiment at the Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider in, in Brookhaven, New York. Um, that one happens at, at high density, higher density than the one in Geneva, the Large Hadron Collider. So hopefully there's some interpolation from that result that can contribute to what's going on with the equation of state and neutron star. That experiment and then the astronomical observations. Uh, uh, so gravitation, not just gravitational waves, but radio astronomy, mm -hmm. um, X-ray astronomy, and so on. Are the uh, can we take all of these observables and can we merge them together in order to constrain and the theory as well? Mm -hmm. I, I can't believe I didn't mention, like the simulations and so on. Can we merge all of these to constrain the equation of state and see, is there quark matter inside of these neutron stars or is it is it neutron rich matter? So, uh, anyway. I see. Yeah. Okay. It's That's it's really cool, and it's 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 uh, uh, what's the word? Um, it's challenging. Um, it might be a little bit too uh, what's the word? Um, ambitious, but uh, you know it it excites me. So I'm um, I'm I'm happy with that. So I'm starting with the high energy experiment, and, and hopefully I'll I'll go to the astronomical at some point in I time. But I'm going to give a presentation next week in our in our meeting about the gravitational waves, in particular the one from 2017, the, oh, new, really? the neutron the neutron star merger. The merger. Yeah. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. So Caleb, we know you've got a lovely parents, and I'm sure they must have reacted in a certain way when you broke the news that you're going to be a physicist now. Uh, uh, when I broke the news that I was into physics, mm -hmm. um, uh, I would say that um, would they prefer me as an engineer? Uh, no, I think they're no, they're very supportive. Yeah, they're very supportive. Sorry, that, that I feel like that was a really succinct answer that that <laughs> I probably should have given in a more succinct <laughs> manner. Um, no, I think I think. Uh, uh, I think they they support me in in, in all pursuits. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I <laughs> my dad my dad's friend is a chemical engineer, mm -hmm. and obviously, um, and uh, when they figured out that I was wanted to focus on physics and I wanted to get a PhD in physics, they were like, "Oh no, we lost him to academia, because <laughs> he could have made so much money in this field, right?" <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's kind of the thing I have to I, I struggle with right because um you know obviously grad students are grad students they they don't get paid like you know NBA players and so on mm -hmm. um, and I've 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 had to watch you know my 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 friends and colleagues in electrical engineering get their bachelor's in electrical engineering and then work jobs where they do half the labor that that I have to do mm -hmm. or half the reading or or investigation or whatever. And they get paid six, <laughs> six figures, yeah. you know, but it, and, and that's kind of the sacrifice that you have to take mm -hmm. uh, at this level. Right. The way I try to justify it is that, you know, you can be you can be immensely rich. You know, it's but but the reality is, is that that money isn't everything. You know, you can be 
posting pictures on Instagram of you in front of Trevi Fountain in Italy or, you know, taking a boat ride on Lake Como in, in Italy or, or resting on a beach in the Maldives, at the end of the day, you're going to be immensely hollow unless you, unless you do work that you find meaningful. Um, and that for me is, is physics. I mean, physics is a, is a meaningful way to, to spend my life and I could care less about the salary. Um, so I have that cross that bridge approach when the, when it comes to the finances, that's probably not the best way to go about it. You should always be very proactive about your finances, but in any case, I, at, at the end of the day, I do something that I find, uh, that I find meaningful. Uh, mm -hmm. and that's, that's, what's important mm -hmm. for anybody that goes into physics should understand how humbling this mm -hmm. field is. Oh, yes. Um, right. and you know, to, to have that type of persona or have that type of attitude is not the right way to go about it. You should, if you, if you really genuinely believe that you're the smartest person in the room, then, um, then you're not doing physics, right? You're or you're in the wrong, you're in the wrong damn room. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, you know, I want to, I want to listen to people that actually explain what it is and, and why mm -hmm. it has any significance. So there's people like, I guess I'm about to plug them. Um, there's people like Arvin Ash and Kurtz Gazat, and there's writers like, or, or the uh, literature like Quanta Magazine and, and Nature. Um, Nature writes really, really good articles. Well, I shouldn't say they write, but the, the articles that are published in Nature are, are really well written and relatively succinct. Mm -hmm. Do you have any that you might suggest to your listeners? Um, uh, Quanta Magazine, I feel, is, is fantastic. Yeah. The, the editors are Quanta fantastic. Quanta is great, yeah. The, the writers are fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, I really loved, there's this one article where they And they're on top of like most news. Like, yes. You know, they're like, they're the Recent. first ones to break the news. So I really great, like their, their um, yeah, so that's one of the buzzwords that gets tossed around a lot, right? The quantum entanglement. And they, they wrote an article about that uh -huh. um, where it's not actually spooky action at a distance. You know, this, uh, the whole reason why uh, the EPR and why Einstein is really, uh, was really skeptical of, of, of quantum. Uh, we just had a discussion about that. But, you know, there's, a, there's entanglement isn't necessarily spooky action at a distance. Entanglement is correlation, yeah. you know? It's, 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 these two particles are correlated with yeah. one another. Yeah. Okay, and that's- that, that, was, that was realized like, much much later when Einstein kind of yeah, you know, but he was right about it. I mean, he called it spooky, but turns out it's not spooky. It's not action yeah. at a distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. anyway, so the, the 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 magazine talks about uh, uh, explains things in a really explicit way without being overly rigorous and without going too much into the mathematics, especially for uh, for the layman. But um, yeah, anyway, th th so I think there's just there's a lot of people that and they. And they take feedback very seriously. So I've seen them uh, change headlines. You know, sometimes they exaggerate, but then they get some feedback, maybe on Twitter or something. So, th so they take they take it very constructively, and they change their headlines and change a lot of things about the article that are wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, I've seen Quantum Magazine do that in real time, so like yeah. very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, was, you know, one day later after they published, mm -hmm. they've, they've changed their stuff. So that's wow. that's good. Mm -hmm. They're very receptive to feedback mm. <clears throat> so anyway um, let's talk about uh, let's talk like you know I want to understand for the listeners who are you know sort of in a similar situation if not the exact same situation how how has grad school been like in the sense that sure. you know you, you still uh, you know it's it's not like you've you know you don't care about basketball or engineering anymore they're still your hobbies and you know you want to yeah like, how much how do you manage time doing all of that could yeah. basketball still be a hobby and you know great question so i i think so when i was doing basketball and electrical engineering right people are like how how were you how were you able to manage that first of all i'm not the first person that's that's done it i'm i'm one of the very few people that have done it, but it's not to say that I'm the I'm the only one. There mm -hmm. was there was another person actually that we played in the tournament mm -hmm. uh, when we went to the NCAA tournament. This is the time we went to the Final Four. We played against Rutgers, and there was a person on their team okay. who actually got significant amount of minutes, <laughs> which made me feel kind of <laughs> shitty. <laughs> uh, and a lot of people gave me, a lot of people on my team gave me shit for it. Yeah. Um, 
that was also studying electrical engineering, and I'd reached out to him, uh, Miles Johnson. He's a really uh, impressive individual. He went, he transferred to UCLA, and he played a year with UCLA, uh, and he also got his master's degree in electrical engineering. So now he's working in, I believe, um, if he if he watches this, uh, I'm sure he'll reach out to me and correct me. Something to do with hardware or or um, infrastructure infrastructure something related to infrastructure and he works with intel i believe so he's yeah so he's working with intel in, in california right now um basketball and electrical engineering for me uh, why was i able to manage it i always feel like like i've said it's never good to put all of your eggs in one basket mm -hmm. and when it comes to what your passions are in life you can never truly have one thing people say that there's like one thing that they're really interested mm -hmm. in you should always have something else to hang mm -hmm. your hat on i mean we've made we've we've had this discussion before right like you should be you shouldn't be a one-dimensional person you should strive to be a multi-dimensional person yes. so basketball for me and electrical engineering they both existed in harmony with one another mm -hmm. because uh it, it was there was kind of break uh, it was giving me a break from one another right so mm -hmm. electrical engineering was giving me a break from the stresses of basketball <laughs> basketball was giving me a break from the stresses of electrical engineering when i got into grad school my first thought was you know and and and, and i had to uh, so in addition to that i also had to stick to a, a schedule right mm -hmm. you know, i had to have that visual optic of a calendar in my room that had everything planned out uh so that i i wasn't um, I wasn't missing anything on your mind because right. at, at that point in your life you have to be you have to be productive and you have to be efficient. Mm -hmm. If you're efficient, if you if you list things out, what I want to get done today, mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing what you what you you can That's accomplish. Uh, actually, I mean, uh, not just not just going about it and riding the wave, but actually taking control of things, and and that's the important aspect of time management mm -hmm. is 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 taking control, waking up being consistent making your bed taking a shower eating i mean it's 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 not just doing the work itself it's it's managing your managing your life right and and you know hilbert has a really famous or uh, i i i, I don't want to misquote and I, I i'm pretty sure that it's him that he said you can only dedicate properly four hours a day mm -hmm. to like immense thinking and and concentration mm -hmm. it's only four hours that you're capable of okay. so the rest of the time you need to maintain on keeping yourself healthy keeping your mind right so being productive is not is not doing the work it's also it's also cleaning your apartment and it's it, it's making sure you have good hygiene and brushing your teeth and going for a run and exercising and, and eating right, it's all of these things mixed into one. So I, I would attribute the time management aspect to that. Now, when I went to, uh, when I got into grad school, I was really excited because mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I get to put everything into one basket. <laughs> Finally, because <laughs> part of me was like, oh, I'm tired of putting things in multiple <laughs> baskets. But I, I soon realized like your life does get kind of sad when you focus on, on one thing, especially if you're not 100% successful. If you're the type of person that's a perfectionist and you're not 100% successful in that thing, um, it's hard. I, I realize, you know, you, maybe it's, it's the way I was because that was my life for the last, for the five years uh, prior. Um, but part of me realized that uh, there is something else that I need to hang my hat on. Mm -hmm. As far as basketball being a hobby, um, yes, I, w I would go and play pickup and so on. Unfortunately, I, I, I don't have as much of a correspondence with my, with my previous teammates. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason is, is probably just because I don't have as much in common. That's mm -hmm. not to say that I didn't like anybody or I, or I held anybody with any sort of disdain or dislike. Um, there's a lot of teammates that, that I talk to every once in a while and that if I saw in person, I could, I could pick up kind of where we, mm -hmm. kind of where we picked off and I, 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 um, pick up where we left off, I should say, not where we picked off. Um, and, and there's a lot of people that I have an immense amount of, of love and, and, and respect for. Um, and I would love to see again, but, but once again, I, I, we don't always hold the same, same interest. So unfortunately I, I don't, I don't talk to him, 
as much, but uh, yeah. So as far as 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 the graduate graduate physics was concerned, you know, what was the other thing that I started to hold my hang my hat on, and I I wanted to kind of flex a little bit more of, of a creative muscle. Mm -hmm. And I actually talked about it with Dr. Kunaratna. He, he said, you know, it's, you should do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, he was very supportive of your basketball. He, yes, yeah, and I'm sure he probably, he talks about it all yeah, the time, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but what he also really enjoys, and, and what I've noticed he has an immense amount of passion for, is, is this idea of art. Mm -hmm. and science which oh, yes. you wouldn't expect right like it's it's a physicist so doing mm -hmm. physics at the highest possible level and we like to i think humans have this tendency to categorize things and that's why we had this whole discussion mm -hmm. about physics engineering mathematics mm -hmm. are they even different you know are science and art different you know um you have to do science in order to enable art and and art also gives you that uh, without getting too abstract, that personal inquiry, you know, what is it that you find beautiful? Mm. What is it that you find compelling uh, in some sense? And is there any intuition and by, and by doing art uh, or may, maybe it can give you a break, you know, so that you can, uh, so that you can flex the creative muscle mm -hmm. that's required in order to make a discovery in physics mm. and, and, you know, Einstein was a big attribute of that, right? He said, he, he, you read about his, his biography and he, he anytime, a, anytime that he had any sort of struggle with coming up with some sort of solution, mm -hmm. what would he do? He would play Mozart or Bach yeah. on yeah. his violin and then all of a sudden the answer would come to him. And I think maybe the reason for that is because you kind of do your best thinking sometimes mm -hmm. when you don't think at all or when you just, when you just feel, yeah. you know. It's getting very emotional. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that for me was like, how did I, what did I do with my time? I started to spend more time on art. <laughs> so I started to do, uh, my other thing was music. And, you know, that's probably one of the reasons I'm really good friends uh, with you and, and, and Prachi, because, because of uh, your expertise uh, in music. Um, so I downloaded the software and I realized you know, we had this conversation before. A lot of music is signal processing. It's physics. I mean, this is, uh, or, or if you want to be more specific, acoustics, right? And uh, uh, so it's it's fairly. It's not as obvious when it comes to, for instance, painting, where science and art coalesce. It's very obvious where science and art coalesce when it comes to when it comes to music. So when I downloaded the software, I thought. Oh, I'm seeing these filters. There's linear filters. There's mm -hmm. there's ways to uh, modulate the signals. There's ways to cut out or enhance certain frequencies. And then there's convolution. These are all terms I've heard of before. It's like no wonder these these people that that are born, you know, and they want to do music when they grow up or they want to be a rock star, get incredibly discouraged by 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 the field because they realize how technical it is. And it was like part of me was like. I might feel like I'm at an advantage here because mm -hmm. I already have all the technical yeah. understanding mm -hmm. or at least the fundamentals. But that's the production part of music, right? I mean, most of the artists, yeah. they, they don't really care about. That's true. Or they, know, hire, they hire somebody. Yeah, exactly. But I, I wanted to kind of, yeah. I wanted to do that. And I wanted to, mm -hmm. well, and I feel like if you're going to produce a great piece, right? It's, it's you got to be a good singer. You got to be a good writer or songwriter. Um, but you also have to, you also have to understand every aspect of what makes a sound something sound mm -hmm. good, right? Yeah. And that's that's what you just said, the production part. Yeah. But if you can't if you're just like that musician that sings, you know, okay, yeah, sure, you can pay somebody to mix and match your your music. But is is it even your music at that point or is it a comprehensive effort? for a lot of people, you know, which, which there's nothing wrong with that. You yeah. know, a lot of people make the argument that music isn't great unless it's done with other people. Mm -hmm. But part of me also wanted to feel like it's not my music until everything is, is, is done by me. Mm. Uh. So that's, that's what made me. And then, and then, yeah, for whatever reason, I just got, I started playing the piano. I started, you know, playing around with different instruments on a programmable keyboard. 
Um, and then we, we've tried other things, right? Like arpeggiator. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so on. And it's, it's cool. It's like you can actually make, you know, uh, some people don't, don't realize how much they might enjoy something until they, they genuinely try mm -hmm. their hand at it. Um, and that's one of those things where it's like, why would you ever do music? And then, and then you try your hand at it and it's like, oh, I actually, I actually really enjoy mm. this. So, yeah, I mean, hopefully I can, I can produce, I can produce something to, to my standard. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't, it doesn't matter if other people like it as mm -hmm. long as I, it's, yeah. it's what I really want to make. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's probably the other thing that I, that I try to do, or I try to at least balance because I, I just, I need to have something else in my life in addition to physics. So, so for, for me, that's music and that's, yeah. that's what I've been like through, through grad school so far as I, I, I just You've I dedicate a lot of time to yeah. that. Yeah. Very that's, nice. that's, that's nice. Mm. You should always be indulged in something else mm. as well. I mean, you guys are like that. You, you, I know you're a musician and, and you read a lot, <laughs> or at least you're posting a lot of books on <laughs> Instagram. Maybe you don't read it. Maybe you just post the book. <laughs> well, you'll never know. <laughs> So we you, we already know that you met Dr. Belbeat the first time at your APS meeting, mm -hmm. and was he the reason that you stayed back at UFH? He's a big contributor. Yeah. Him, him and Dr. Gunaratna. Um, I wish I could have said Dr. Rati too, but I didn't know very much about her mm -hmm. until I took her her course and until I took her course in quantum. Mm -hmm. um, but had I known about her, she would also be a, 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 a big reason, too. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the more I'm, I'm learning about her, mm -hmm. you know, and, sh and it, she, she is, I mean, we talked about Neil deGrasse Tyson, how some people aren't very humble, right? Mm -hmm. She is arguably the, the smartest person in, in the department, the smartest person that I've ever met. And she's immensely humble. I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think it. You know, when you when you meet her, and that, that's not to say that she's not well put together. She's mm -hmm. a very well put together person, but it's like every single paper <laughs> that mm -hmm. I read, I look up QCD, thermodynamics of QCD. What's the first? What's the first uh, word that I read on that paper? C dot rati, and then I'm seeing C dot rati, C dot rati, mm -hmm. C dot rati everywhere, mm -hmm. and it's like, whoa, this this woman is amazing. Um, so yes, Renee Renee takes a lot of credit uh, uh, for. Um, helping me get excited about pursuing a graduate degree. Uh, Gamanu takes a lot of credit, and right now Claudia. Cla I would say Claudia takes takes an immense amount of amount of credit. Yeah. So um, this is a question that we also asked our previous guest Trip. Mm -hmm. That you know we all want to be great physicists, and every, everyone think, thinks about it. But what if what if you're unable to? Do you have Do you have a backup plan? Do you Do you want to you know go back to basketball? Is it even possible to go back to basketball? No, not really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but generally, like not just basketball. Do you have a backup plan? How do you How do you deal with with this? Like, yeah, if I don't make it in physics, which I'm not planning on that. <laughs> um, uh, if I don't make it in physics, uh, I, I I feel like I can't do too bad if I have electrical engineering degree, and I have. At least, at, at the very least, graduate courses passed in, in, in physics. If that doesn't give me an advantage above the, you know, other electrical engineers, then I don't know what will. Uh, but I, my focus in electrical engineering was, so electrical engineering degree plan is, is different from other engineers, right? Because you have to choose a concentration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's power, there's, there's cybersecurity, there's um, computer, engineer, computer design, embedded design, and then there's electronics. And I did, I did electronics. Mm -hmm. So I probably would, would end up doing that, either uh, designing antennas or designing analog, analog electronics for... Mm -hmm. Intel or maybe for NASA if they want to design a space, program. but that's probably not as profitable working for the government. Um, so I, yeah, I'd probably work in the industry, and I, I I'd probably be okay with it because you know there's a lot of interesting problems that that the in, that they work on in an in industry. Mm -hmm. um, it just wouldn't be fundamental for me. So <laughs> I, just, it, I I. I I feel like in some aspect, at least right now, if I was ever in that position, mm. I might be grinding my teeth. Mm. Um, 
but you know that's not to say that there's no significance or importance or meaning and 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 what a lot of people do okay and, and and i think that's kind of the problem with a lot of physicists is is there's an arrogance quality to it and the truth is is just like i said they shouldn't be arrogant i mean this this is an immensely humbling field and there's a lot of things that when you first enter this field you don't know what you don't know i feel like i'm at the level where i know what i don't know <laughs> you know um so you know the people that that work hard you know and and dedicate their life to something that they feel is substantial is really important right. whether you're you know um railroad worker is that, <laughs> is, <laughs> is there such thing uh railroad worker or you're a civil engineer working on a highway that's being built mm -hmm. uh or sorry that a highway that will enable people to move across the country or you know um a janitor that's making sure places are clean in order mm -hmm. for people to go about their day in a productive manner. People can't be productive if they don't work in a clean environment. I mean, uh, that that makes, I mean, the janitor's job, whether it's, it's anywhere, I mean, uh, you know, people couldn't, uh, engineers that were working on the Apollo missions could not have done their jobs properly if they didn't work in a clean area. And that, that arguably makes a janitor's job at, at you know NASA headquarters mm -hmm. one of the most important because it enables everybody to do what they're they're, they're capable mm -hmm. of doing so it's it's important to to maintain that level of humility and maintain the notion that you are but one piece in a very large mechanism mm -hmm. um, that humanity is 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 churning in order to get to the achieve its highest highest level uh whatever that is so whether you're a physicist if you're not a physicist doesn't really matter mm -hmm. just as long as you do something that's that's meaningful yes. uh so i the problem just would with me would would be is is can i find something meaningful out of out of doing mm -hmm. something else mm -hmm. i probably could um but damn i really want to be a physicist <laughs> <laughs> No, because you were talking about ambition earlier. Uh, so, I mean, how 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 important is how important is greatness to you in the field? Greatness in the field. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as long as as long as what you believe, uh, as long as it's it's what you believe is great. Uh, that that's the most important part. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that okay. So, uh, definition of greatness, and a really explicit definition or sorry in a really explicit manner would be uh, winning the nobel prize right mm -hmm. or winning the fields medal or, or something mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. but you and i and, and prachi have clearly seen that just because you win a nobel prize does not necessarily qualify you as 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 the highest uh in in in, in quality among mm -hmm. the physics physics community mm -hmm. and i don't want to name certain names but we've watched nobel prize uh, winning speakers speak and they've had you know interesting mm -hmm. interesting colloquiums and interesting talks mm -hmm. um uh, but there's a lot of people in the in the community that you know there's there's people like okay einstein didn't win the nobel prize for general relativity mm -hmm. right he won it for a photoelectric effect mm -hmm. uh but and he just barely won it right because the nobel prize committee was relatively anti-semitic anti at the time in nature mm -hmm. so they didn't and they didn't want to attribute nobel prize to what they perceived as a jewish yeah. as a jewish science the mm -hmm. jewish theory of of uh general relativity um <laughs> and and then there's stephen hawking right you only get nobel prizes for uh, when you're alive yeah, when you're alive and, and when you when you observe something, yes. when, yeah. you, when yes. you predict something, yes. right? And, and we have yet to observe Hawking radiation, yeah. even though it's one of the most beautiful theories out there. Amy Neuther didn't win a Nobel Prize. I mean, there's so many great physicists that, mm. that, never, that never won the Nobel Prize. So definition of, of greatness in a less material manner is, is being able to achieve something that enhances our knowledge base and understanding of, of what the hell is even going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I want to do that. 
if I can figure out this whole thing with neutron stars, mm -hmm. and, and even if it's a small piece of the QCD phase diagram mm -hmm. I can map out, I'll, I'll be content for, for the rest of my life. That's, yeah, yeah that's, that's a great way to put it. Mm. So we know what you've been doing. We know your re what your research is uh, in. And we also know that this is what you wanted yeah. to do when you started. Ho hopefully the viewers know too. <laughs> <laughs> we I'm also know that this is what you wanted to do when you thought of going to grad school. And that's why I feel that you're in a good position to tell people that what their path should be to become uh, or you know get into experimental high energy physics. Mm -hmm. So what do you feel should be their path when they're the, when they want to be what you're doing? As an experimental uh, in experimental high energy physics, right? I I I wouldn't want people to uh, focus specifically on one field of physics, especially mm -hmm. if the, the young young people that are listening and watching. Uh, the, the first thing that you need to probe is, is, is what, what you're even interested in, right? So the first way to do it is, is you've got to exhibit some level of courage, right? Because there's, there's people that are experts out there uh, in certain fields. Um, and try to probe, try to probe what, you're, what you're interested in and in, in, in your curiosity. Go out and read books. Uh, talk to professors that are uh, uh, your physics professor or your physics teacher uh, in high school. Talk to them about what fields of physics that everybody's interested in right now and then read about these fields and see what, what exactly probes your interest. But, but the main thing is, is <laughs> it's less about the intellectual capacity of becoming a physics and I think more of the courage capacity. It takes an immense amount of courage to try something that you don't know if you'll be good at or not. And I think that's that's probably the thing that that keeps a lot of people from from trying to do physics. Oh, I'm uh, you know, they watch Big Bang Theory and they think you have to be some sort of uh, you have to exhibit these social quirks and you have to be this awkward socially awkward person that isolates themselves and reads textbooks all day. And, and, and the reality is, is that's not, that's, that's just mm. not what a physicist is. That's right. Um, and yeah, so, so what you can do is, is you need to exhibit the courage to go up and talk to people about these things that you might not necessarily know anything about. And then try your hand at things that you might never have tried before, but might realize that you, that you could possess the capacity to be pretty damn good at it. So, um, yeah, that's that's what I would say. So, probe your interests. If you're interested in high energy physics, if you're interested in, in probing uh, the behavior of particles at, at at the most fundamental level, um, then then try your hand at. Uh, you know. Yeah, you can reach out to me uh, personally. I'm happy to address any inquiries uh, <laughs> you might have. Um, uh, but yeah, that's, that would be my suggestion. Try all of physics. Do, do it all. Do it all when you're young. Um, condensed matter, um, astroparticle physics, uh, theoretical, whether it's uh, anything related to GR or anything related to uh, uh, nonlinear non physics or nonlinear dynamics, um, nuclear physics, particle physics, do it all. And, and genuinely try your hand at it. If it's, if it's research, um, if it's research or personal inquiry or investigation, whatever, try your hand at it. And if you get obsessed over it, then that, I mean, that kind of answers the question for yourself, right? So yeah, that'd be the advice I'd, I'd give. Uh, how has your experience been so far? And is it everything that you've wished for or like? Yeah, I think, um, I've had the pleasure of getting to know a lot of, uh, not a lot, but, but some experts in the field. Um, I think it's kind of discouraging, especially, okay, so uh, uh, there's this assumption that you, that, you, that you understand everything at a really high level, and it puts a lot of pressure uh, on you, right, because the courses go by really quick. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm, I, I feel really blessed and happy that, that I was able to, to pass these courses 
I, I, I'm guessing that's what you want to talk about, right? Just the courses or just the, the experience in general? Just the experience the, so far. The experience so far, yeah. So, um, yeah, and, and, and um, yeah, so I, I, I've enjoyed getting to know some, these professors that, uh, that have taught these courses. Um, now there have, been, there have been instances in which, you know, students might feel uh, discouraged or um, uh, if you don't say something where it's like you're saying it at the at, at, in a certain way mm -hmm. or at the highest level or um, then yeah I think there might be a little bit of little little bit of that going around and I know there's some students that uh, have complained about it I I don't necessarily have any major complaints mm -hmm. uh, at the moment this is a this has always been a field that I've that I've been immensely interested and passionate about um, and I'm glad I still feel that way especially after the first year of graduate school mm -hmm. I know that's not how a lot of a lot of people around the country feel a lot of people have relatively negative attitudes towards graduate research because it is hard I mean there's no there's no uh, dancing around the fact that it's it's hard I mean it's challenging for for your mental mm -hmm. and it's challenging for the amount of energy that you have to put in for limited financial return which I mean you should expect that right going into graduate school this isn't necessarily the field that you're going to become uh, a millionaire overnight in it's the field that you go into because you're immensely interested uh mm -hmm. interested in it and you want to probe that curiosity um and interest i mean i i know uh so one of the people dr curry uh got me in contact with um was a student at uh that that studied physics got his ba bs in physics mm -hmm. and then went to harvard mm -hmm. and got his phd in physical chemistry mm -hmm. and he knew a lot of people uh, harvard has the highest suicide rate in the country because there's there's a lot of people that that feel discouraged i mean they 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 spend their entire life and this is the whole aspect of being one dimensional right they spend their entire life on trying to succeed at the highest level mm -hmm. in physics and then they get to harvard and it's like you know what what what, what the hell do i do now i mean i've, I've achieved it <laughs> yeah. yeah you know and 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 now it's like they don't have anything else to hang their hat on. Mm -hmm. You know, their, their life is sad and it's lonely and it's, it's uh, yeah, so I mean, it's, 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 it's a problem, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, with, with people trying to get their way through graduate school. So I would say that um, I've had, I've felt like I've been able to maintain mm -hmm. a good attitude about it mm -hmm. because I, I'm doing it for the sake of, of finding the meaning yes. in physics. I'm not doing it for the sake of, of having any sort of financial success or yeah. anything like that. In grad uh, school, I don't think that if you come here for the monetary reasons, you will be able to survive for a long time. You cannot, it's not sustainable. Yep. Absolutely it's not sustainable. Not. Yeah. You have to be immensely passionate to yeah. be here. It's also not sustainable if you focus everything on physics. Yes, yeah. of yeah. course. Physics should be should always be a part of your life, yeah. not your entire life. Well, the other thing is, is, is you're not going to figure everything out in a night or in a week oh, or, yeah. in, or a in a lifetime. <laughs> or in a lifetime. That's but true. but you will eventually figure, or somebody will eventually figure things out mm -hmm. if you're consistent. Yes. Yeah. You know that's that's the main thing is is consistency, mm. and and being able to sustain <laughs> yourself. If you yeah. if you burn yourself out. You're not going to, okay, who cares if you make the discovery now or in 10 years, as long as you make the damn discovery, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So the main thing is just to be able to work at it every single day. You devote four hours of physics to physics a day, mm -hmm. and that's all you need to do. You don't, you don't need to do 24 hours yes. yeah. uh, a day. And I know there's, there's people that, that do that. Um, four hours of intense concentration a day is, is enough to make you immensely... Enough to make you a Nobel Prize winner. So looking back over all these years, is if you could, is there anything you would like to change? Mm -hmm. If I could have done it all sooner. Yeah, if I could have done it all sooner. I feel <laughs> I'm, I'm also at that stage that if... That's, I, that's, that's what you feel in academia. Yeah. 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 I wish I could have done this If I could have this done this, sooner, if sooner, I could have yeah. started studying gravitation at age 15, I think <laughs> it would have all made... Because I, I don't feel inherently, like, my capacity to learn doesn't feel any different 
than it was when it, when I was 15, right? If yeah. I had if I had genuinely tried my hand at all of those problems in yeah. Zangwill's textbook or uh, <laughs> the undergraduate the undergraduate textbooks really well written in electro we're talking about electrodynamics. Um, I probably could have understood all of that before I came. Well, that's that's I a mean, little ambitious. I mean, we would have had more time to understand. Yes. Is what I feel. Yeah. Even if we wouldn't have gotten it in the first go, we would have had yes, enough yeah. time. We could have given two years to one subject, and it still would have been <laughs> great. I, I probably also would have started basketball sooner. Mm -hmm. I probably would have been significantly more successful mm -hmm. as far as basketball was concerned. Uh, you know, but that, that that's the thing, right? Is uh, it's good that I'm I'm having these uh, well it's not I don't regret anything um, I, I don't regret anything that I've done or the way that I've gone about gone about my life but it's important to have that sort of hindsight so that when you go into the as you're progressing right in, in the present and you should mm -hmm. always be in the present um, that you don't you don't live or, or sorry that you live so you don't have any regrets for the future mm -hmm. um, is also is also really important. So I don't want to be at age thirty thinking that oh when I was twenty four years old I could I should have been do doing this or studying high energy physics or whatever. I'm doing that now. Mm. You know I'm I'm not screwing around with you know I could have mm. gotten a job in mm. electrical engineering and then come back to school. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you feel like you're on a this regret minimization framework of life. Then, then you should always feel like you you you, you, you want to do things as as soon as possible. Mm. So you're you're naturally leading to the next question. Do you have any advice for your younger self? For my younger self. For your, for your younger self. Mm. Um, it's it's all gonna work out. <laughs> <laughs> I, if my younger self is watching on the <laughs> camera right now. Uh, it's Wait, this is not interstellar. <laughs> <laughs> do the crying meme, <laughs> like him crying in the chair. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, if my, if my younger self is watching through a, through a time warp of, of some sort, <laughs> I would probably say that, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, just, just relax, don't be so stressed, don't, 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 don't put so much pressure on yourself, it's, it's, it's gonna work out, it's just, you gotta be consistent, it's not gonna happen overnight, it's, uh, you gotta make, Make some sort of progress every day, even if it's even if it's the smallest little thing, even if it's oh I went and worked out, or if you're the type of person that's never worked out before, I went to the gym and I looked at the weights. You know, I just I just looked at the dumbbells <laughs> and then you went home. That's that's totally fine. Yeah, that's totally fine. Um, but just just do something. Don't 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 lie in bed and and. Uh, uh, and watch Netflix and, and watch YouTube all day. Just, just, just go and do something. And lastly, what is the best advice that you've ever received? Hmm. My internship. I've, I've, uh, when I was working my internship at a power engineering firm, uh, I was discussing my salary with the, at the time, the vice president of the company. And I went into his office, and he knows that I'm young. He's not gonna, you know, uh, he's not gonna negotiate too hard with me. But he he said one thing. He said, "Caleb," and this is America, right? He said, "Caleb, um, in America, you never get what you deserve. You only get what you negotiate." So, in other words, you know, obviously that's 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 a term meant for the business world, yeah. where you only get for instance, if we're talking about my salary, right? You, you don't necessarily get what you deserve based off how hard you work, which you should in a fair world, but you only get what you negotiate as far as your salary is concerned. But it, it, it's, it's a little bit more abstract than that, if you think about it in terms of you know where I am right now, is that you, only, you don't necessarily get out of things um, uh, get a lot out of things by working hard. Working hard is one aspect of it, but you get a lot out of things by talking to people, having the courage to be able to go up to people and say what you're thinking, say what you don't understand, 
and and have the humility to learn. The man that has the humility um, to understand that he doesn't know everything is is somebody that will conquer the world, not necessarily somebody that thinks immensely high of themselves. Somebody that has the humility to say, "I can get I can get better today. I'm I'm I, I'm better." than I was yesterday, and I will be a better version of myself uh, tomorrow. So yeah. that's, a, that's a wonderful place to end. Yeah. Uh, thank you for doing, doing this, Caleb. Oh, uh, my pleasure. Appreciate it. Um, make sure you. to like, comment, and, and subscribe. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, leave it, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Caleb. Yeah. Thanks for doing this, man. All right. <laughs>